Welcome back. It's another episode of SV Adventure, trying to get off the dock and get out of here. Uh, at the moment, even though it's really calm here in the marina, there's a big gale just outside of here. So we're a little bit stuck, but there is a weather window that's coming up towards the end of the week that we're keeping a pretty close eye on. We'll get into that a little later as we get a little closer, but um, in this episode, we're gonna do something a little different. Um, one of my favorite things about this lifestyle is the people you meet along the way, but almost as interesting as the people is their boats. And I'm a guy who loves boats. So today we're going to give you a boat tour. Um, I think I'm going to start a new segment called My Friend's Boat. We'll see how it goes. It's a working title. If you have a better one, leave it down in the comments. And if we use it, you get 10 SV Adventure points, which are good for nothing except street cred. So anyways, uh, if you've been watching these videos for a while, there's two faces you've seen probably more than anybody other than Brenda and myself. And that's Jason and Jen. We buddy boated, I don't know, thousands of miles with these guys for months on end. And uh, during hurricane season, when we've been off the boat, we've been all over the world with these guys. They're family. And they're stuck with us. They can't shake us. They've actually been up in the yard for the last week, uh, swapping out some through holes, the cutlass bearing, had the bottom painted, some various odds and ends. But uh, they're about to go back in the water. And once they're back in the water, we're gonna sneak on their boat and go through their stuff. Actually, Jason's gonna show us around. So we'll see how this works out. If you wanna see some other of our friends' boats, let me know. We'll see if we can finagle some of them into it too. But uh, I will say about their boat, it's a Cape George 36. And um, it's actually a pretty amazing little boat. It's a heavy duty, hardcore, back to basics cruising boat and it's a thing of beauty. So, once they're back in the water, Jason's gonna show you around. Dodger. So this is um, my 1989 uh, Cape George Cutter. This boat, like various other boats, um, like a West Sail you can buy in, in different states of, of completion, my understanding of the story is that this boat was bought by the original owner and completed in a barn in Olympia, Washington. The owner uh, bought the hull and did the rest of the work uh, under the tutelage of, of uh, Cecil Lang at Cape George um, and completed everything in here. Uh, he was a little bit taller so he, he extended the cabin top a couple of inches and it's a little bit longer so if you look at other Cape Georges of this size it's a little bit roomier um, which is good for me because I'm 6'1". He did all of the woodwork in here. Uh, he must have been a pretty good carpenter because I think he finished it pretty well. You, you look at a lot of boats that were finished by owners and they don't look this good. Um, this boat is a little bit different than a lot of boats this size because it actually has a Pullman berth. Um, the Pullman berth is a uh, queen size bed um, at the top so it's, it's really nice. Jen has to climb over the top of me to get out but otherwise it's, it works really well. The heads up forward uh, makes it a little bit bouncy but not too bad. Um, we don't like to sail in that rough of weather anyway so uh, we're usually at anchor when it's, when it's really rough out. This boat for a 36 foot uh, boat with 10 and a half foot beam there's a ton of storage. We've got a couple of uh, blow-up paddle boards up front, um, some area for storage uh, up in the bow. Underneath the bed, there's a ton of storage, big drawers that go all the way back to the hull, hanging locker, um, a lot of room for, for, um, for two people. It's, it's a great two-person boat. Um, when my daughter, who the boat is named after, uh, comes to visit, she gets to sleep on the couch, and that's not as comfortable for her, but uh, I think she likes to come visit, so it works out all right. Oh yeah, got a water maker. There's a, uh, the water maker pump is under the floorboards and uh, it's made by Cruise RO and it does about 20 gallons an hour. It's rated at 20 gallons an hour, um, which is nice. It's actually, uh, the AC pump is run off of our generator. Uh, we have a little Honda generator that we run. So how, do you have a racing stripe? 
Uh, we do have a racing stripe. It's red, which is generally known to be faster than 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 green racing stripes. It's a little bit, a little bit, a uh, little bit taller. Which you know, is... I'm actually going to edit all this out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right there. <laughs> it's a very narrow boat, which makes it um, relatively fast for a 36 foot full keel boat. Um, but it's also uh, a little bit rolly because uh, if you look at the bottom, um, the the way that the uh, the the shape of, of the the hull looks and um, it's it's kind of an hourglass shape, so there's not a whole lot of initial form stability. But once you get locked in under sail, it, it it's really nice. Um, but the intention of this boat was an offshore boat that was simply um, uh, finished and easy to maintain. We don't have pressure water, we don't have hot water, we don't have a shower. Uh, we use a glorified book sprayer for our shower in the cockpit. The head is is all manual. Battery wise, we got 450 amp hours, um, a couple of 140 watt solar panels. Yeah, it's it's ultimately super, super simple. What's the story with this coffee grinder? Uh, the coffee grinder, I kind of wanted to go with the, the simple, low maintenance, low power approach. And so I bought that on eBay and it's never really worked that great. It's much more <laughs> efficient just to uh, throw the electric grinder at coffee. And so we either buy coffee that's already ground or we just grind it in the electric grinder. That, so it's that's all for show. It's decoration. But I get a lot of comments about it. So. I love that thing. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty. Um, one thing I really do like on this boat is our AIS uh, system. It's a um, Xantrex 8000, I believe. Um, but it's a NEMA 2000 bus as well as a Wi-Fi router. So we run all of our navigation through iNavX on our iPads and phones. Um, the AIS will spit out information about just about all the electronics depths, uh, GPS speed, AIS targets um, into our, our, our iPads and our phones. We don't have an SSB on this boat. We chose to use an Iridium Go. Um, it didn't have an SSB when I bought the boat and we went to the boat show and an SSB installed was minimum five grand. Um, over a five year cruise, it's about the same to pay for the data for the Iridium Go and buy that. Um, a lot of crew, we did some research and a lot of cruisers are, are going more with a satellite um, system and, and I don't really know a ton of cruisers who just get on the SSB now to just chat. Most of the time they're, um, you know, people are using cell phones so they're, they're in range or they're using an Iridium system or, um, you know, for us it's Iridium Go, we can text and, and talk to people. Uh, works out pretty well. When I bought this boat, it actually had one of those, I, I'm going to get the terminology incorrect, but it's a, um, a, a fan drive or a worm drive or a rack and pinion type steering where you had a, a gear that came off of the back of the, the rudder. There was a, a, a wheel that went out the back of the boat and had a little gear that turned the gear on the, on the rudder. And that's how you steered the boat. Um, I had some work done on this, this boat and had them change that steering system to a tiller. It's, it's a little easier set up to get uh, hooked up to the, um, to the wind vane. And I kind of like the idea of having a tiller in a small boat like this. I bought the boat in 2007 and repowered it in, I think, 2008, 2009 with a Yamar 40. Um, replaced the jib, added a wind vane, added radar, added all the electronics, um, and left in 2016 to go cruising. my friend's boat. Well, we're pretty much ready to get out of here. Got a small little weather window that's coming up in a couple of days that we're keeping an eye on pretty closely, but it looks like it's going to happen. So, we're grabbing Jason and Jen. We're going to head into Tapachula. We're going to stock this boat up with food. Okay, we're heading to Tapachula. It's about a half hour from here. And to get there from the marina, actually the marina here is in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing around. So we hop on what's called a Collectivo. If you've never taken a Collectivo in your life, you're missing out. These things are great. It's your typical soccer mom minivan, but there's no limit on the amount of people they can fit in these things. The record we've been in so far is 26. That's two and a six. 
26 and a little minivan. It could have fit more too. So we're gonna hop on one of those, hit Tapachula, stock up with food. And hopefully pretty soon we'll be out of here. So you stand out on the highway until one of these bad boys passes by, you flag them down, and then you pile on in. And since we get on out in the boonies, to start out, this thing's pretty empty. But the closer you get to the city, it fills up pretty fast. That was an easy ride. Only 24 people, not even close to a record. They weren't even trying. But it was hot and sweaty. We got that going for us. Okay, stocking up. See ya. And sometimes when you're stocking up, you stumble on what's known as a jackpot. Look what I just found. Our old friends on Dogfish, Marga and Greg, they found these in Ziwat Nail. And we found them! These things are incredible! Got a little smushed in the car ride, but if you remember Ding Dongs, this is like a Ding Dong on steroids. Wow, it's like a freshly baked Ding Dong. It's got the good stuff inside. Incredible. I got two of them! All right, we're in a bit of a strange situation because we're done with everything we gotta do to get out of here, but the weather's not letting us get out of here. We'll get into that in a bit. Um, we're keeping an eye on a big weather system. We'll get into that. But uh, for now, since we're sort of just stuck here twiddling our thumbs, tied to a dock, we're gonna take care of a few things that we've wanted to do for about 10 years or so. Some of these high traffic areas in the boat, they're kind of funky. So we're going to sand and varnish, because why not? And for the next few days, our little mighty ship became a dusty, dirty, and smelly construction zone. Before this varnish goes on, I'm using a foam brush. And I know there's gonna be some of you out there who are gonna tell me I'm doing this all wrong. You should never use a foam brush. You should only use the finest haired brush from a miniature mole in Western Uganda, but this is what I got. There's no miniature moles running around. If there were, I would find one, I would hunt it down and use its hair. Cruising is about what you got. All right, that is four coats of varnish, and I have to say, it's looking pretty good. It's not finished yet. We've got a couple more before it'll be totally done, but uh, I'm not exactly sure that it's gonna happen right now. The little weather window we've been watching for a little while, uh, that in theory happens tomorrow. We actually gotta get out of here tomorrow, so we're gonna head over to Jason and Jen's boat. We're gonna have a little family meeting about a strategy, and then hopefully we'll be out of here tomorrow morning. Crossing our fingers, but um, Odds are this varnish will hold up in some little remote anchorage up in the Sea of Cortez, put his last couple of coats on it, and it'll be done. But at the moment, it looks a million times better than the old stuff. But the downside is all the old stuff that we haven't done yet. It looks terrible. Yeah, that's the way it goes. We'll get to it eventually. But so far, the stuff we've done, awesome. 
Salina Cruz is like 186 miles yeah. away from here. The waves are supposed to be 14 to 17. Well, if you leave Cabal According to Wendy. And so, and it's gusting. All right, it's time for another quick little talk about weather. Um, We've been eyeing a little tiny weather window for the last week that has got a little bit tinier. From where we are right here in Puerto Madero, Marina Chiapas, it takes us about two days to get to Huatulco. Between here and Huatulco, there really is no good safe anchorage, especially for the weather that's coming our way in a couple of days. So out in the Tuanapec right now, there's a gale that's blowing about 35, 40 knots. Then there's a tiny little opening of about 16 hours where it's calm and then right behind that another big system blows through and the one that's coming it's about 70 knots it's crazy so uh getting through this there's just not enough time um if there was a small gale coming behind it we'd probably go for it we can handle 35 knots on the stern but 70 that's a whole different story so um we're gonna let this little window go by. In a couple more days, there's another small one that shows up, but that just means we're gonna be here for a couple of more days. We'll put some more varnish on this boat. We might get finished with that. But um, the, I think the last thing I wanna say is that once we're out of here, the southern coast of Mexico is fairly remote. Um, there's not a whole lot of internet access, so as far as posting new videos, they may be a little bit delayed, but uh, we'll still do our best to post updates on Facebook. So if you haven't seen our Facebook page, go to that. You can sign up, follow, whatever you want to do. But if you want to see what's up with us, check that out. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully we'll see you soon. And it won't be here.